Hollywood Beach Planning and Development Board meeting for Tuesday, February 22nd. Ms. Fisher, you want to use the pledge? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, may I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? Actually, is there any changes or anything? Can you say my comments? Correct. Okay, so thank you. May I have a motion to approve the agenda for tonight? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a second? Tom, thank you. You good on that? Okay, thank you. All, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. None opposed? Thank you very much. Approval of the minutes. You all had a chance to review them. Any comments? Amendments, alibis? Hearing none. May I get a motion to approve, please? Thank you. Thank you. Second? Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. None opposed. Communications and announcements from staff. Sir, my name is the administrator. Contain our no communication or announcement system. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. I see no old business here. Uh, okay, that's good. Oh, and I did speak with the city attorney, but due to a relationship and shared assets with a shareholder of a firm involved with both of the um, developments tonight, um, pursuing the Florida statute chapter 112 to recuse myself from those items. Uh, new business. Seven A approved request for community design appeal of Chapter Four, Article Three, Section Six F Two D, Integrated Garages, requiring a have Oh boy, a bit of old. Help me on that. I might have. I might have messed that one. Four. Area to wrap all of the levels of the parking structure where the structure has street frontage in order to disguise the garage's facade and maximize design compatibility with the Broad Stone Point Beach Project proposal proposed for T12 South Federal Highway applicant Stephen Skaggs ESS Properties LC. Sure, let's see if we can get everybody. Yes. Sworn at one time, I know that. Some people who want to have individuals. I do agree with that. All right, so what we're going to do, we'll provide a reasonable opportunity for you guys to be heard on the agenda item for the board tonight. If you would all stand, if you would like to speak, at least one in, thank you. Thank you. If you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceedings, so we choose to hold you in the application. Thank you. When you come to the microphone to speak, if you have any uh, <coughs> special qualifications to testify, you can architect, engineer, or something. Nature. Please so advise the board. If you have documents that you want to be made part of the record, they need to be identified and copies left with the clerk. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we we'll go ahead and get the presentation now. The budget. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Anna Miskell. I'm here on behalf of the applicant. Thank you. And we have provided, and it is now on the screen, a presentation for you. So, for some of you, this um, would you just identify the applicant, please? Yes, the, the applicant is um, Rod Stone. Uh, my client, Robert Hall, is in the audience. Uh, he is the content purchaser. And Mr. Sands uh, represents a, a collection of the owners of the campus and the lenders of the campus. Do you have any objection to the consolidation of the items for the purposes of the presentation? I do not. I would prefer it. Thank you very much. All right. Then we will hear 7A and 7B right now. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this project is called Broadstone Point Beach. This is the location on your screen. It's 212 South Federal Highway. 
it represents um, it is approximately a block south of Ocean Avenue on the east side of Federal. Um, and you may have seen this project before in a slightly different form. This is a modification to what was previously approved, but we are going to go over some of the differences. We're bringing back a much better plan. I'll explain to you why we're back. This is a blow up. It's 2.76 acres, as I mentioned. It's on the east side of the highway, south of the ocean. Um, straddled for the most part between Southeast First Avenue and Southeast Second Avenue in a smaller section. Several years ago, um, a group of the owners, and there are nine of them at least, um, one being a condominium interest, um, got together and they assembled and aggregated their property. They went under contract with a different developer. That developer went through the majority of the process, which included a partial abandonment of Southeast First, um, a compound amendment, and a rezoning. Those all happened, they were approved. Um, however, that applicant dropped, they dropped the contract. The owners decided because they had gone so far along that they would finish it off and it's approved, understanding that. Most buyers are going to come back with their own picture, their own vision, their own product type, which is the case here. And that's why we're back before you. Um, the Broadstone Project represents my client Alliance. Their vision, uh, we think that it's a much better plan. And I'm going to go some of those highlights. So, this is the approved site plan that I just discussed. It was approved by um, and called the legacy product, product or project at the time. And here are some of the elevations. Again, uh, we are here before you this evening for a major master plan modification and a corresponding master site plan modification to allow improvements, modifying the unit mix, which is one of the principal reasons that we're here um, for the residential component of the development. We're increasing the commercial component from 12,000 something. So a little over 13,000, so we've added uh, commercial here. And we are most notably increasing the open space that from the minimum requirement under the approved plan to approximately 40%, a little over 40%. So we have added significant open space, which this developer felt was very important for the, rest, the future residents of the project. And then we are reconfiguring the site plan to insulate the parking garage, but that the, your code requires that it be wrapped. And while it wasn't wrapped fully before, it still isn't wrapped fully. And I'm going to go into more detail as it relates to that. So we're seeking relief from Chapter 4, Article 3, um, Section 6F2B to provide an alternative, uh, to provide alternative design elements and facade treatment to shield the approximate 78 feet 6 inch section of the garage that hasn't been fully wrapped and integrate that into the entire project. And by the way, I'm joined this evening by our entire team, which includes our planner, our, our architect, our engineers, our landscape architect. Um, and if you have any specific questions, we'll certainly call them up to answer them for you. So this is the new plan. And on this plan, you will see a lot more green than there ever had been before. And in particular, you're going to see a lot of green running just east of the portion of the frontage that is on Federal Highway at the dead end to what is Southeast First Avenue. And that is the biggest change. And in that green space are amenities for the community, which really didn't exist previously. So that's something we need to plan. The, the parking structure that is exposed, if you look at this, is on the north side towards where there is a dead end. That 78 feet is right there on the north side of the building, and that is the only portion that really has to be wrapped. That's the, the relief that we are asking for. Um, otherwise, the garage is actually better wrapped than it has been before. It's still 274 units. It's still eight stories tall. The unit mix is a little different. We would be more suited for what professionals and other residents are looking for in the market. So let me go back for a minute. Um, I'll briefly go through these 
architectural elevations that we have specific lines over and the architect. So this is looking at the north and south sides of the building. And it gives you some of the materials and colors, earth tones. This is the east and west. And here's a rendering for you, a view from the northwest. That's coming from, that's um, Stabby Second Avenue there. And this is looking at the building from the south side, looking north. There, by the way, there is an entrance. The primary entrance is on Stabby Second, right there. You can come to see the area um, by which the ramps start. And this is the area, it shows you a little to the left side of the side where the garage is exposed. Previously, in the, the approved plans, the exposed area was at the dead end. And so, as you're driving west on Southeast First Avenue, you couldn't help but stare at a garage wall. Where the garage is today is facing north, it's tucked in, it is not visible from really any major frontage is visible from the dead end portion of Southeast First Avenue. So you don't see it as you, if you pulled on to Southeast First Avenue and we're going west. The view corridor there would show you what is the occupied space, commercial space, and the upper levels being residential units. And that, and that view corridor that you'd be looking at as you're looking west also would show you the lovely amenities that are planned for that area. And again, that's a significant portion of the open space increase, which now is at 40% instead of two. So, and this is a view from the Southwest, looking at Federal Highway would be on this side of the side, looking northerly. Your staff has recommended approval um, on all counts. I won't go into that specifically, and we don't have any issues with the conditions that are stated in their staff report. And we're happy to answer any of the questions that you may have. And thank you very much for listening to us. All right, thank you very much for your time and presentation. At this time, we'll go ahead and ask the public for any input or any uh, anything that they'd like us to hear on the proposition before the board or the commission. Please keep in mind that we are a volunteer board and we are also an advisory board. So this is not the last stop for this development, this proposal. It does still go to the city commission, whether we vote up or down. Yes, can we come up please take your name and address for the record? Thank you. Susan Oyer, 140 Southeast 27th Way. I'm sure your brain's already. Sorry, um, I want to be able to see faces which is why I went to this side. Um, obviously, I'm against this. I mean, I was against it when I sat on the PD board. I'm sorry, you've got one story houses across the street, single family homes. You have a couple two story, um, smaller family, and you know, individual person owned um, apartment buildings. This is not compatible to the eight-story building across a you know a 15-foot street from a single-family home or a two-story small family apartment. Um, there's no, there's and and Bonnie did a fabulous job. I mean, this is a much better project than the last one, which everybody complained about. Um, and, and I think there's been huge improvements. I mean, I just wish it wasn't eight stories. And and if you were a child out playing ball in your front yard, would you want to look at an eight-story building 20 feet away from you? And there are, you know, there are children. This is single family homes across the street. This is a 12 foot, this is not a major street. These are regular neighborhood streets dividing this from single family homes and the two-story apartment buildings um, that have families and, and just show other people. I mean, I think. You know, there's a need for this, although I think we need condos, not apartments. Um, my other issue is is sewage. The, the city can say what they want to, but I have video of 500 Ocean with sewage bubbling up. You've all probably seen or heard the stories of what happened at Chapel Hill. There's just too much housing and not enough sewage capacity in our city. And yes, you might replace these pipes. But that's not going to solve the problem in the neighborhood. Um, we desperately need businesses. We desperately need jobs. We do not need any more housing on a grossly overtaxed sewer, overtaxed sewer and plumbing system, which is what we have downtown. And if you want to see the sewage bubbling up, I'll be glad to pull the video off my phone and send it to you. 
There is just no way our system downtown can handle this. And they are lying if they tell me they can, because I've got the video and so did the person who sent it to me, as well as you know, all the other people who've seen it down the line. So I, I would I know having sat on this board for years that this is not the last stop on this train. And I, I would ask you to be cognizant of the fact that this is a single family neighborhood where this is going. Um, I don't know if everyone else is going to jump up and holler like the last time when the businesses were having this because it's going to adversely impact businesses. You're probably the only new face here at work. Everyone else has heard of this, but there are businesses that are going to be adversely impacted up and down Ocean Avenue and along with federal from not just the construction, but this is blocking off their access for their vendors to deliver to them. And we, I know I'm just repeating everything we talked about a year ago when this came up before. I mean, this is truly a lovely project. It is much better. It's just way too tall. And it's it's just not compatible. I mean, I can see a three-story, even a four-story max, which is what you know we have here. But you know, eight stories across from a single story. And it looks like I'm out of time. Trevor's put the timer on. Ooh my. That's gutsy, Trevor. It's a global. Yeah, that's gutsy. <laughs> Thank you. Oh boy. Oh, that was not too bad. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, Mr. Attorney, do I need to uh, mention that I'm going to do a three minute timer for public comment on this? Well, this is a good idea. I'll let the public know what the limitation is. May I amend our. I think the last one was over three minutes. Huh? Are we, are we enforcing a three minute timeline for the for public comment? Oh, for no. You always bring it when I come up. Okay. How come the last person spoke? We, we had an experience the other time. The state may not address it out of here. I'm seeing all these seven, ten might be seven street point feet over the harbor hall. In lot one, right next to Harbor Hall, in lot two, built 25 years ago. The board president's father built the two buildings. They're about three foot below the road level when they were built. Could you speak into the microphone, please? Well, I'm trying to also speak to the audience because speaking to you guys is the board, sir. Thank you. Huh? Address the board. Not the audience. You're addressing us. So, uh, I guess you read the newspapers and uh, all these kind of buildings like this being put in in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Surfside, uh, Broward Bay, uh, all over the shore, and how they're destroying the already bad sewer system, knocking out public service, electric, gas. This weekend I came home again. My two buildings were built three foot below uh, high, uh, King High. And now, of course, there's no seawall and all the bulkheads haven't been maintained by the HOA. So the salt water comes in and floods and damages the building, just like in Surfside. So every time you build these things at the building, like the woman said, and like I'm doing press stories on every single block all over. Point Beach, and it's destroying the city. It's exposing us to sewage. It's polluting all the waterways, insects, rats, mold, flat mold, mildew, etc. And yet, all the development. How much time do I have? So I come home this weekend from the beach, and there's all these sewer emergency trucks all over the place, and I'm on Six Court, which is a public street. And the HOA president comes up to me, I'm trying to add it to my story, comes up to me, get out, get off this road, you're trespassing. And then they start naming the city officials. That, you know, oh, I'm going to tell concerned, I'm going to tell the mayor, I'm going to. And then, of course, they say, we're going to call the police. Well, let me tell you something, public streets are public streets. And if that woman and me want to take pictures of everything, we can do it. It's like I come here. Take pictures of all the flooding and the sewerage. The city is becoming a health risk. And you sit up there, you smile, and the city attorneys, hopefully they'll be gone. But look at the legacy they're leaving behind with this city. It's a disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace 
It's unsafe to live. You put more development. I come out of 7th Street. It takes me six minutes just to get on the federal highway with traffic. And then when you get on, if you're on a bike, people run you over. The police don't do anything. So what do you do? You keep overdeveloping. Overdeveloping and smiling. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Juan Cuesta. I live in 630 South 7 Avenue, right across the project. And um, we are in favor of this project. I think it will be great for the community. Um, I think the only concern of myself and some of the residents in that street is uh, just uh, the traffic. But uh, I think the city can contribute with some traffic coming like a um, speed bump or something for future traffic. But I think uh, developments like this are quite welcome for the city. And I don't have a problem since right in front of my place. And I think you just have value. So, can I ask you what your address was again? 630 Southeast Second Avenue, right across. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Would you mind spelling your last name for the record? Cuesta, C U E S E S. Thank you. Thank you. But you're not just giving me my microphone. I want to give you a microphone. Can you hear me, Your Honor? Yeah, Tommy Thomas Irving, 132 Southwest 2nd Avenue. Um, Yes, T U R K I N. Uh, first thing, I had a resident officer to contact me. They were curious if they could view this online and if the public would be allowed to speak the same way they can via Zoom. No, it's currently not, not available online. Okay. I, I told her I'd you know, at least ask. Um, so I think the project was nice. My concern is traffic um, and the height. So we know that there's an existing restriction here in Boynton Beach for that. You know, we didn't follow that with Riverwalk. And a lot of people I thought were concerned with that development and what that's going to look like when it's done. Um, you know, as a city, we want to grow effective and efficiently. And I'll give you the analysis here, you know, that was submitted to Palm Beach County. Are they considering these other developments when they're analyzing, you know, and producing this data? Correct. <clears throat> we'll see if we can get the engineer to answer that for you. Okay. Um, because I know that there's an additional project across federal, I believe it's 115 South Federal, and that is 236 units uh, proposed. From what I understand, I could be mistaken, but I, I believe it's 236. So my concern is, you know, we're, that, you know, we have Riverwalk, we have 236 units, and then we're proposing an eight story building um, with. I believe it was 274. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, I think we need to do something about infrastructure first before this rapid development. Um, but again, it looks nice. I'm just concerned about the traffic and the height. Um, thanks for what y'all do. Sitting on board in your public service. Appreciate it. Thank you. Can I let your friend know that the, the school that you drove before the city commission is attached to there? Oh, I'll let her know. I just, well, I think she's used to uh, being able to do it online. So I'll ensure they can speak the same way at this type of meeting. The city commission meetings are still a uh, hybrid meeting of in person and broadcast. And participants that are watching the broadcast can sign in and participate. So, as the chair pointed out, there is that opportunity okay. on, the, on the same project. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? I don't know what to speak in hate. And I don't know much about what's really going on, but I'm just speaking in return in respect to what I've heard from the right, citizens. I'm, 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 I'm Mr. Brown, I'm like your current candidate for mayor, uh, CEO of Brown Right Ministries. What do you do? Swear me? What are you sworn in? You mean swear me in? I will right now. Thank you. Uh, well, I love this. You swear in front of the testimony or not to be in this proceeding that you can the whole thing or not to I do. Thank you, sir. Yes, I'm Bishop Brown, right? Current mayor for Boynton Beach. Been living there six and a half years. 
I'm just here because of this high rise going on. I don't know whether it be good for the people or not, but I want to know what the people got to say about it. So whatever the people got to say about it, that's why I'm running for mayor. That's what I got to say. Because you know, I'm just one vote. If we want, if we want to get there. And uh, I'm about for the people. So it's about change for the better for the people. So I would think whatever the majority of the people have been talking about, whether you go up or down, don't uh, you do. I think that's how you all should vote. Not uh, in respect to no developer's agenda, your agenda, but the people who live your agenda. And that's what it's all about. So that's what I have to say about it now. God, you go God bless you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon, uh, Jim Knight, 740 Havana Drive, Oakwood Hill, Florida. Um, I was sworn in. Um, I am a property owner here in Boynton Beach. I am the broker for this transaction. I've been working with these uh, uh, nine property owners for about the past you know, seven years now or so. Um, I wanted to just mention a few things if I could. One was the overall master plan that was set up a number of years ago, anticipated this height and density of this location. And that's what's been brought forward. Um, on behalf of the property owners, which is uh, Mike and Gloria Bowden, they own Bowden, so a uh, Stoey Combs Bowden funeral home up the street, lived here their entire lives. Um, Dr. Sarah Garcia, Francisco, and Olga Waldo. This is so Lisa Olet um, has passed away. Um, Betty Bingham, Betty Bingham lives over across the bridge in Ocean Ridge. She's owned the property here for probably about a little over 45 years here. Um, Maria Ruggieri, uh, the Skaggs family, which owns um, two Georgia's restaurants here in town. Uh, these were all people that have committed a lot to this community and are excited about this project coming forward. They're not people that just came out of town uh, some time ago. I'd like to speak a little bit, if I can, um, about the uh, developer here. I, I mentioned that I live in Northeast Boca Raton. Uh, the Northeast part of town, known as North Federal Highway, was kind of our stepchild. That's where I've lived for the last 28 years with my kids and wife. Uh, kids are out of the house now, thank goodness. Um, but anyhow, there was a project here called the Levitz Plaza. I don't know how long we've all been around here in town, but at the north end of town there, it was a dilapidated, tired center, shopping center that hadn't done too well. Broadstone, the Alliance Group, came in and built a residential community there that really changed the north end of town around there. And I'm very excited about this project here, and I hope you all can see to moving this project forward tonight with a positive. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to speak on the agenda item for the board? All right, hearing none, uh, would you like uh, to address some of those questions? Would you like us to go ahead? Well, if you don't mind, um, again, Bonnie, this will hear my hand. I have some answers that have some of these uh, papers we'd like to hear. Um, so, they, uh, first of all, as to the height, we are in the highest category in the city as far as density, as well as height. This project could have been up to 150 feet. Um, obviously, this developer chose to go significantly lower than that, and we are not asking to go an inch more than what had previously been approved. So we are well under 150, which complies with the code. Your job is to look at our project and whether we why. It's not to decide whether the use is the right use or not. There was a vision, it was embodied within the CRA master plan, it was also embodied within your comprehensive plan, and everything that we've done here today is consistent and compliant with your zone land use. The only thing that we're asking for relief on is the portion of the discussion where I talked about the RAP. And what we're doing is better, much better than what we did before. And it, in order to do that, if we are allowed to do that, it gives us the ability to go from 2% open space to 40% open space. So this is, and, and, and thank you, Susan, for, for, for saying this. Um, and, and she, you know, she was being very fair when she said it. This is a huge improvement from the last time it came before you. And I presented that one reluctantly. This one is about the best I've seen come in downtown. You won't find 40% across projects. Um, so the height 
you can't consider because we're actually meeting what is allowed by code. So, so whether you like it or not, you cannot consider that because we meet the requirements of the code. Um, talking about the single family neighborhood, one thing that I forgot to mention, we are in the your high category in your core area of your city. Density can go up to 100 units per acre with, uh, with applying bonus density. And so, you know, to talk about it being incompatible, the word compatible doesn't fit into this meeting because the city commission already deemed its land compatible for that density and for this height. So we need your comprehensive plan as it relates to that. We need to design for this relationship. Again, uh, traffic um, and um, this, uh, I think the person, um, Mr. Kuster, he asked about traffic. Um, so I, I'll give you an answer to that. Every person that applies, every developer or applicant that applies for some sort of a site plan or a master plan or a comp plan or rezoning, we have to get a traffic statement. We need an approved, at a minimum, we need an approved by Palm Beach County. Once you submit that and they spit out the TPS letter approving the project, it goes into their system. It's, it's a program and it counts against anyone else that applies after you. So our application would reflect everyone that was before us that received TPS approval and anyone coming in after us, our numbers would be in that formula. So they do take into account past projects and pending projects from the date that the TPS letter is submitted and, and approved. And we do have a TPS letter. We were required to do that. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Oh, um, Bishop Wright talked about we should look at Hawaii. And that isn't, while I think it's important to listen to your community, and I don't want to come across as sounding otherwise, but you have a code, you have a comprehensive plan, you have rules, you have regulation. It's your job to review those rules, regulations, and competent evidence and decide whether we meet the requirements. You have an excellent staff here at the city of Long Beach. They are sometimes on my side and they are sometimes not. But the one thing that they do very carefully and thoroughly is they review every single application that comes in here. They look at engineering, they look at architecture, they look at landscaping, they look at photometrics, they look at floor plans, they look at all of it, they look at the open space and setback requirements. And they, in their report, advise you as to whether we did it right or we didn't. And where we didn't, they highlight those areas that we didn't. Your staff report was as thorough as it's always been, which is very thorough. And it did not identify one area that we were deficient in. This property allows what we're asking for. We are consistent with it. The only, the only relief we've asked is related to the RAP. And that gives us a better project better mix of units that are better to serve your future residents and even some of your existing residents. And it gives us from 2% to 40% of the space. So we hope you'll recognize all the progress that we've made in coming back the second time and move this forward. And I think that about ends my presentation, but we are here to answer any of your questions and we're going to do that. Yeah, I'm going to ask the board, uh, Jay, thank you so much. May I speak? Yes, sir. Okay. Just for your background, I spent 10 years on the zoning board up north in the city, which is a legal entity, not an advisory board. And no one has ever, in my experience, come here and told me what my job was. I, hear you. I feel we have a responsibility to the community. And when somebody comes before us, you may want to rap, but we heard from people tonight. They were concerned about the impact of your project on the infrastructure. I respect Mike and his group. I don't know if they consider it. I would like him to speak to that subject. I think they are entitled to hear what the city's response is concerning about the infrastructure here in the city and what the impact of this be. I understand traffic studies are done, and I'm perfectly comfortable with that. Uh, I'm an engineer, but I didn't see a lot of civil engineering on this thing. So again, before you answer it, because I don't think you're an engineer, I would like to ask Mike, speaking on behalf of his staff, is there indeed any valid concern that the population here tonight was expressed through reservations about this project on the impact of the plumbing, sewage, 
electrical systems in the city or it did it not issue. That's what I want to know. Good evening, um, I basically refer back to my time our facilities department, uh, someone in the group to comment, review the projects accordingly, comment on the other ones that we have built, and do it all that. At a preliminary stage now, we need more thorough with permits, but we've not been given any red lights, signals, or warnings thus far. Anything else, sir? I'm all good. Question. Yeah. Um, just conceptually, this has been approved by the, by the, the, the city commission as far as height and general structure. And what we're back here for today is not, not to denigrate your work, but paint and decorations and cover the, the, the graphics. Is that correct? <clears throat> well, I that's correct. I mean, we call this a new and improved type of terrain. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. It, it's it's a, it's miles above what we saw the first time. And this board, as everybody here remembers, voted against it last time. And I went to the commission and the city commission, and they they voted for it. So back to us now, as part of a a major facelift, if you will, but. Uh, to me, the fact that you have taken out that, that dumb tunnel for the first avenue just speaks by it. That was what uh, I've seen dumb things. That was big. That was a big. I said at the time, I'd like to be a lawyer and have an office in that building just to run. You wouldn't have to run after ambulance. You'd be seeing cars being hit all, the, all day long as they pull out of that building on the corner of highway, one block of the motion. Um, I think you've made, you've made some improvements. Everything looks good. <coughs> the fact that, that we are kind of hamstrung by the fact that, the, that this is, has been conceptually approved, and we are here to, to, to do the A or A on the, the decorations of the redevelopment. It doesn't change the outcome, outcome structure of the building, so it's all there. All the, all the Points uh, have been addressed as far as traffic and, and sewer line. That was all done. That we don't have a whole lot to say about. So I, I, I like the program. I like the, the, the display. I like what you have done. I think it's great that you've got more open space. Uh, I feel sorry for the people at the Frankie's who will not be able to get Jenny Brothers down the back street to service their, their restaurant. But, uh, you know. That's, that's the way it goes, and that was an issue before. But it's given given our limitations at this point, I think this is a good plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> yes, good evening, Ron. Good evening. Uh, I agree in general that the, the project has improved from what was originally presented to the commission and to the board. I have a couple of questions on. Um, a couple of the details, the 274 units. Um, tell me a little bit about how they're going to be market rate units, affordable workforce, what type of housing? Yeah, so the majority are market rate. Um, there is no workforce here, but you do have a density um, bonus program that's called uh, their sustainable units. The units that are 750 or less um, are, are essentially part of the bonus density. Program and those units are expected to be. I, I'm not using the term literally, but more affordable. Um, they don't. They're not being restricted, de-restricted as affordable, but based on the smaller size, they will be open and available to even less than market. But essentially, it is market project. But there's no restrictions. There are no restrictions. There are no covenants or such. Um, question on the wraparound. Why weren't you able to? Create some habitable space to wrap that parking garage instead of the metal ground. Yeah, and explain the 2% versus the 40%. Wouldn't we get more than 2% green space on the project otherwise if we didn't have that comparable? So I'm going to first um, draw your attention to the screen because it shows you where the green area is. And the area immediately to the right of that is the 78P. 
And part of that is where the driveway is coming in off of Southeast First Avenue. But in order to wrap it around, we would actually, according to the code, we have to wrap it only to the point where the street ends. It's only where you are from on the street. And that's the 78. But there would be a car, it, it just wouldn't function properly to not wrap it all the way to the building, which runs more south. And you would lose green space there. Um, it, it, it just it, it, it didn't make sense from a design perspective. It didn't work from a design perspective. And it really would have impacted the parking in the parking garage more than anything. They would have lost parking spaces in order for it to wrap on that side. And it's just too tight to be able to lose the parking. Aesthetically, is there anything more you can do to wrap that garage where it'll look? Well, so where the majority of the 78 feet is, there won't be any other, um, there won't be any visibility to any street. So you have to be coming into the project to see it, and you're actually going to be turning before you get there. Well, I'm thinking of the people that live there, so they're going to have to live with what they look at. Well, so no one that lives there will be looking at that part of the building. The people that are on the north south area, the northern part of the building, actually will be looking. East, and they'll be looking up to the rack area. The far, the most southern unit may catch a glimpse of the of the structure itself. But our architect really did a good job to make the building look like it was occupied through um, screening materials. Um, and I, I think I'm going to have I'm going to have Alexia come up and explain it because I'm not an architect. But they used you know faux balconies and things like that, or what would appear to be. Um, railing on a balcony so that you would think it was occupied although it's not so I'm gonna let you get into it. And then Celestia Maru architect. So with this garage with that important consideration can you really negotiate on how to make best use of the habitable appearance of the garage aesthetically. And we actually have a few different maneuvers in which we can do so we have walls pushing and pulling at a depth and dimension to the facade treatment with color hues and steps. We have openings that are sized accordingly in window openings to have the same level of scale and visibility. We have screen at every single opening to both screen what's going on in the garage and provide interest at the outside and exterior. We have some decorative screening at the flanges that front the garage, while we also have some other more horizontal elements overall banding it to the overall aesthetic of the project. So we've kind of taken this as far as it can go to really appear habitable and fit into the overall scheme that we're presenting. And if you're looking at this drawing, the area that we're speaking of is actually the upper graphic. And um, Alexia just described some of those architectural tools that they use to hide the fact that it is a garage and make it look like it's the rest of the building. So that is the area. And the green space is in front of um, the westerly part of that. So I, I also Thank you. I, uh, I have a couple of questions. First, I'd like to state that the green space and open space is really, really big improvement from last time. If you were about as max as you can get. In the uh, last go around, I want to talk about traffic. Um, does anybody, do you have a traffic engineer here? I do, Adam. <laughs> And I want to talk about the PR trips. Um, can you state how much they are morning and afternoon? Yes. So the proposed uh, the morning will be 102 PR trips, and the afternoon will be 142. So that is in one the span of one hour, that's how many vehicles. What is that just federal highway additional, or is that that's what the, the project will generate entirely? Most of that will be on federal highway. Okay. And then, what is the level of service currently for federal highway? You know, we um, I can tell you that the we we analyze the intersections, so Ocean and Federal, um, as well as uh, Wayne Beach and Federal, and both of those are 
uh, at worst case level to be. Um, is there any analysis on what level if they would drop to an F with your additional trips? That's with our additional trips. That's with your yes. guess. Correct. So we don't know what they are currently. Uh, currently is, um, I don't know that we looked at that just because we looked at usually like the worst case scenario with ours on it. Okay. We'll be, we'll be trying to still it, but we don't say worst case. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so thank you very much. Uh, one more traffic problem. I, I see what, what are we doing about Southeast Fifth Avenue and behind it? No turnaround there. Is that just a dead end straight into the? I can see it right here on your rendering. Is that literally what it is? So I, I believe you can turn in, and Josh would be able to join. I believe you can either turn into the garage or there's also the ability to, to turn around if you're a, a larger vehicle. Yeah, the ability you're to going to get delivery trucks and stuff like that back here. How are they supposed to navigate that road? Uh, Josh Horning with Timmy Horner and the project engineer. Mm -hmm. um, 15, 16 South uh, Congress Avenue. Would you speak your microphone, please? Sure. So, so, that, so on uh, sheet C7.00, we've got an exhibit there that shows kind of the auto turn. Uh, the analysis we ran to show the turn of turning movements on first, uh, now that I think that end. And we've uh, added provisions to the building, widening the entrance to the, uh, to the garage and also the loading zone there in order to allow a teacher for fire trucks, loading trucks, and those sorts of vehicles. So there is turn around there, it's just the rendering kind of didn't capture it. Correct. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, another question, um, kind of about the construction of this building foundation is that the sheet pile on that foundation? Do I get another, another engineer? Uh, that's the client. Um, the auger cast pile. Okay. So how, how, how long do we think that this will be in construction? About 22 months. 22 months, approximately. All right. And what are the, is there an MOT and provisions for traffic during that construction that will not impact the city's residents? There will be a time of permitting that's required to be submitted. Mm -hmm. So when we submit for a building permit, any kind of improvements uh, to the roadways, an MOT plan would be provided. Well, thank you. Um, one more question on engineering, ma'am. Sorry, sure. that's um, I'm on my exercise. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the infrastructure, are we um, absolutely positive that we've got the infrastructure that can handle that? Uh, that this, I, I saw that the utilities department is asking to do some upgrades to the gravity sewer. That's correct, they have. And you've agreed to those conditions? We yeah. have. Okay. Any other upgrades that they've uh, that have been floated? Uh, there's water main upgrades also included. Um, quite a few, actually, um, and I believe that's it. And that provides benefits to the residents and the, the businesses around you as well? It would, yes. Thank you. All right, I appreciate that. Okay. Any other questions for you? We good? Thank you very much. All right, well, yeah, we're good, thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll go ahead and uh, entertain a motion. Move through, through 7A. And 7B. Seven seven Wait, hold on. We, we need to do them separately. We can hear them together, but we got to do them separately. Thank you. Move for 7A. Second. All right. I have that. Uh, do I get a roll call vote on this one? First one. You know, we okay? Do the roll call, please. Yes, that's what I was asking for. Chair votes for it? No. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Sobel? Yes. Mr. Thank you very much. At this time, I get a motion for 7B. Thank you very much. Motion 7B. We're good with that 7B. Do I have a second? That's it. It's on. Uh, Tom, you have to again. Thank you very much. May I also get a roll call vote on that? No. Yes. Mr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Mauricio? Mr. Sobel? Yes. Thank you very much. Is there a word or Not names. Is there a required decibel limit for this uh, board meeting? There's not. 
Thank you. All right, at this time, if you all want to leave, if you're uh, done with 7 8, 7 8, we'll give you some time to, to gather your belongings. All right, at this time, we'll go ahead and move forward with 7C approved request for major site plan modification and conditional use approval of raising Haynes Restaurant, including a new 2,771 square foot building with full drive facilities and 68 seats on the BJ's Wholesale Club out parcel located at 1550 West Clinton Beach Boulevard with the Planned Commercial Development Zoning District. Applicant is Christina Bell King Good morning. Pretty good, pretty good. Hi, good evening. Uh, for the record, I am Christina Belenke with Diane Ms. Bachman. Um, Christina Belk is here as well. Um, and we are here to bring before you um, a conditional use and site plan application for Raising Canes. Um, and Raising Canes is a little bit of a newer concept to South Florida, but we've been in business for quite some time. Um, so to get started and to just provide a little bit of an introduction into Raising Canes, uh, we have Adam Garachi here. He's the Senior Property Development Manager, Fry Cook, and Cashier for Raising Canes. Adam Garachi, 6800 Bishop Road, Plano, Texas, 75034. You can move that mic up if you want to. Um, proceeded a great introduction. We are new to South Florida, but we have two of the locations that are already actually up to the ground on Long Beach or Pompano. So, this will be one of the first locations um, in South Florida, in addition to those. But we started in 1996 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are just chicken fingers. So, I know there's a lot of chicken uh, competitors out there on the market, but we do one thing and we do it really well. And we don't challenge that by adding additional things to the menu. That'll be important later on in the conversation when Christina is showing the site plan and talking about some of the details in relation to that. But Todd Graves, still the owner of the company, uh, actually worked as a refinery boiler maker and then also as a sockeye fisherman in Alaska for two years, raising capital to start the first restaurant. And he has single handedly grown it to 600 locations since then. So we're very excited to add one of those additional locations to this community. Um, we have six core pillars for uh, community involvement. And so those are education, being hungry, welfare, active lifestyles, business development and entrepreneurship because we also started as a small business and pretty much anything else that you guys might think of. Our restaurant is unique in that every restaurant employs a marketing manager. So basically that's somebody whose job is to sponsor your little leagues or to make a donation to the Humane Society or something like that. Provide food at an event in the community if necessary, at no cost to you guys. So those are things that we want to do and want to get back into our little bit different than some other businesses we have. 600, 600 other locations where they can attest that that's also the case. A lot of times it's lip service, but here it actually is. So, Florida would be, I think, the 34th or 35th state that we're entering. Um, and again, this would be one of the first locations in South Florida. We're consistently ranked one of the best places to work during the pandemic. We actually didn't let anybody off, we actually hired 5,000 additional people. Um, fast food restaurants and drive-thrus, quick server. They did really well, as you probably know. And so we're continuing to learn and adapt from that. And some of the site plans that you'll see this evening are reflective of that. And with that, I will hand it back to Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Great, I'm a little bit shorter, so I have to bring my phone back down. 
Um, so the property that we're speaking of today is located on the south side of Boyd Beach Boulevard, um, just west of Congress Avenue. It's highlighted in the orange box there. Um, it is just less than 0 0.9 acres in size. It has a feature land use designation of local retail commercial and a zoning of planned commercial uh, development. It's actually part of the BJ's PCD, um, which if you look behind uh, the property on the aerial, it's the large parking field and then the large big box building that's BJ's there. Here is kind of a zoomed in image of the current property. Um, so there's the Winchester Drive that serves kind of the, the full commercial plaza and access the main access to the commercial development, the PCD. And then you have an internal drive aisle on the south side. Um, the property now, uh, well, it was a former Wells Fargo building, it's now vacant, um, but it has circulation around the building and it currently has uh, drive through uh, for banking purposes as well, although again, it's been vacant for quite some time. Um, just a couple of graphics of the current property um, for those that might not be familiar, um, like refresh, refresh your memory. Um, there is a little bit of landscaping. This is the view of this property from White Beach Boulevard looking south. Um, there are some oak trees there that will be remaining in place. Um, and there's currently just a small area of landscaping. I believe the code requires only five feet in this area. Um, and it's just seeing our plants that we are significantly enhancing that. Um, so again, we have two requests before you tonight. One is a site plan modification to allow a 2,771 square foot restaurant with drive through and a conditional use request for the drive through element um, specifically. And so here's our proposed site plan. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it in a little bit more detail. But again, on the east side of the property, that's Winchester Drive, um, actually. Yes, that is what it is there. Um, so that acts as the main uh, drive aisle to the commercial center again, and you have a shared access road along the south end of the property. Um, the property itself kind of has a similar configuration to what exists today. You drive in, there's parking on both the east and west sides of the main drive aisle and to the site, and then you go into your drive through lanes. Um, this specific uh, site plan has two dedicated drive through lanes plus a full bypass lane, um, and it has 70 feet of vehicular stopping from the order point. I'm going to bring Adam back up at this point just to describe a little bit about the uh, drive through operations of raising teams. Uh, they are pretty efficient in how they operate. So as mentioned earlier, we saw one thing, I shouldn't think there's the only variations of the three, four, or six. Uh, they all can comprise whole slow coast and drink. There's really no other variation. So if because of that, we're able to get people quicker a whole through the queue a lot quicker than you might see at some other chicken restaurants. That's because we know what they're gonna order. So during the pandemic, we started rolling out these dual buy dual drive through lanes with the bypass. And what that allows us to do is deploy crew members or our, our employees out to the lanes to take orders with tablets and take payment with tablets. So that in peak hours, rush or dinner rush and lunch rush, you would get more people through the line quicker. At that point, the order, the mini boards are turned off. The pay window, the pickup window becomes kind of obsolete, and the cars are moving through being staffed by the crew members, and that's how they're taking orders. That's at a clip of about one car leaving every 30 seconds. The average customer spends two and a half minutes in the queue from the time they place their order to when they leave it. Because we know it's ordering, there's constantly chicken being dropped in the fryer, so it's not sitting there, it's fresh, we know what you're getting, and we're able to keep people moving. Some other restaurants are very courteous and they'll let you in and haul. When you order, the, the crew member will say something to the effect of, hey, hey, it wants a chicken today. So it's, it's, in, it's to imply, you know, let's, let's make the order quick. 
And the whole experience is basically set up so that you're in and it's expected or just, you know, kind of the experience. It's not rude, but it's just like very, you know, efficient. So that's why we stand out a little bit different. This is the other QSRs out there. Um, we have maximized the queuing here. I uh, believe we're overstacked, if not close. So we are um, pretty confident that this will be sufficient, and if not a little bit better than sufficient to not have any issues that you might see at some other restaurants um, who have older legacy drive systems. Thank you. And uh, just to follow up on that, as part of our applications, we have submitted traffic studies um, detailing you know, the effect of our traffic for the site. We submitted parking studies um, to show that we have sufficient parking for the restaurant and uh, a queuing analysis as well to show that the staffing um, is going to be sufficient to uh, accommodate the customers. And here's our proposed landscape plan. Um, again, we are significantly enhancing the landscaping that exists today, um, both along the Boynton Beach Boulevard and throughout the site. Uh, there are 10 existing trees and eight palm trees that will be preserved on site, including three large oak trees along uh, Boynton Beach Boulevard, which um, you know, have grown significantly over time and are, are really attractive and nice elements. So those will be maintained. Um, for the trees that are being removed, there's a DBH required for replacement of 20 caliber inches, um, and we are exceeding that. We're uh, providing 34 inches of DBH for replacement, um, so going above and beyond that requirement as well. Um, in terms of landscaping within the off-site or off-street parking area, there's 675 square feet required, but we're proposing more than double at 1,482 square feet. Um, so overall, we are providing uh, landscaping in excess of the total requirements. And you know, we have a nice variety of trees, shrubs, and accent plants as well uh, to really enhance the appearance of this property. In terms of the project elevations, um, you can see it's a very contemporary style. And raising cane can strive to differentiate itself um, from others through varied materials and penetration. Um, they use kind of the towers to define main points of contact, and the brand colors are designed to fit within the spectrum of urban and suburban settings with complementary layers of materials and textures to help define and break up the building mass. And here we have just a couple of renderings um, so you can envision what the building will look like. And then in terms of the conditional use criteria, I won't go through all of them in detail. Um, I will say that we have addressed them through a justification statement in the backup um, and staff has addressed them in their analysis as well and confirmed that we have met all of the conditional use criteria, um, you know, in terms of ingress and egress, we are using the existing shared drive aisles. We submitted a traffic study showing how that's going to work and um, we won't have any significant impacts on the adjacent street networks. Um, again, with all street parking and loading, uh, we meet the code requirements and have submitted parking studies as well. Um, and then again, refuse and service, utilities, screening, buffering, um, lighting, required setbacks, open space. Um, staff has done a very thorough review of their of our application and our plans um, and concluded that we have met those criteria as well. Um, so again, I'm not going to spend too much time on them, um, but if you do have any questions, we'll be happy to dive into that. Um, and with that, staff has recommended the approval of the request for the conditional use and use of site plan application. Um, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have, including if you want three, four, or six. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, at this time, uh, anyone from the public would uh, like the opportunity to be heard on this proposition before the board? 
Hi, Susan Oyer, 140 Southeast 27th Way. I love this project. I, I wish you had actually moved it to District 3 on Federal, south of Wolverine, because all we have is a Taco Bell and a very old McDonald's, and the whole stop in the city desperately wants fast food, and we get sick of driving out west, which is my one issue I have with this. This is next to Chick fil A. And anyone who's ever driven on Boynton Beach Boulevard is well aware of the the traffic disaster that surrounds Chick-fil-A, even at the best of times, that place is packed. I don't know why you want to move next door to them. I know you understand you do like a whole different type of chicken situation, but you know, I, I really think, you know, this is going to be a very busy restaurant next to the busiest restaurant in the whole city. We all go down. Hopefully, you've seen the Chick fil A in Delray on Linton US 1 and the lines that wrap around in the traffic disasters. I think that'd be good in the morning. I mean, I really love this. Move it down into my neighborhood. I, I think we're asking for trouble having this next to Chick fil A. I, I, you can't tell me the traffic studies. Of, oh my God. Have you been to Chick fil A on a Saturday at lunchtime? I, I, I just don't see the rationale for this. I think it's absolutely amazing. And let's just put it in a different place that's not next door to the most traffic hungry restaurant in our city. And every city in America is, in my assumption, from what I've seen everywhere I go. So I love this. And I, I just maybe, maybe there needs to be some conditions to rework the traffic and the ingress egress with the plaza. Maybe. BJ's can do something to solve this and make the problem better. But this is a massive, massive problem with Chick fil A. And now you're going to put another incredibly busy restaurant next to it that is equally drive through heavy. And, and I, yay, welcome to our city. We want you to just move to a different part of the city. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mr. Milley, 710 Northeast, I'm taking the 407 on the whole in that club. So, um, I noticed on the highway with a lot of the high rises you're putting up. Are you going to speak on the agenda item before us? Who is that? It's the chair. Well, yes, sir. Are you speaking on the agenda item that's before us because you started off the federal highway and high rises? I'm warming up. She was talking about Delray. You didn't bother her. Why not? Why not, Mr. Chair? She was talking about Delray. You didn't interrupt her. Who is to speak on the agenda item before us? I'm asking you why did you I'm her? asking you if you're going to speak because I need to maintain the quorum in this meeting. Okay. I'm not kidding. The only good thing is these things are recorded. That's fine. Okay, so I'd like to continue. Can I? Please, you may. Please, I would offer you the opportunity to sure. on the proposition so, the board. So, while the previous speaker was speaking about the federal highway and everything, I am also I'm saying, isn't it interesting? You build in all these high rises with retail on the first level, and a lot of the ones that you've already built, they're all vacant. You know why the retail is vacant? Because you don't have a car. So now, if you look at it, that area in Boynton Beach, which I, I go there, uh, all the fast food places are out the road. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's unheard of what's there. I mean, Dunkin' Donuts backs up 70 cars right in the street. And I do have a question for the chicken finger. Is that the meal? Am I, am I allowed to ask? No. Oh, am I allowed to ask about the food? We will follow up and find out. You left some of the calorie of that meal? I'm not going to ask you the calorie. Well, why? This is COVID. You know, calories are important. All right, let me continue. Please. Huh. I can't believe this. So, uh, so take over a bank, and, and what you're saying is that an incredible restaurant is not coming back up like all the other stores on the Point and Beach Boulevard. And, uh, that's that's basically your statement. 
But if you look over the past six years, all the things that you say the same thing about you go on North Beach Boulevard, it's a traffic disaster. So I think you should maybe put this place in one of the places on Federal Highway. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mike, you name and address for Mike Schaffer, I live at 430 Grady Southwest Second Avenue. Do you want to step up to the taller way? Uh, I've been a, I'm a third generation lifelong resident in this area. Um, I think we need, as a parent, I need stuff like this for my daughter to ride a bike and have something to eat where she doesn't have alcohol, you know what I mean? That type of environment, I think that's important. Um, I think it's way better than another marijuana shop. You know, that are up and down and play the whole area with crack pipes. So, um, but my only thing is living here my whole life, it's a flood zone. Okay. So, there's all the older people on the side of here, it's a nightmare for the water, the drainage, that area. And it, in a time of a hurricane, I don't see anything on their site that would retain the water. And what a lot of people don't know that are new to this area are there's pipes on the um, north side of the property that run in the intercoastal. Okay. And it's just now getting where we have a lot more fish than we've had in years to come. Um, and if you start plugging up those drains and that stuff that flushes and percolates the water with all this concrete, what are you going to do to the environment? You know, it's already been ruined by all the other stuff. That's where I, that's my question. You know, I'm okay with something new. I mean, it's an eye holder, let's just all agree to that. But I think we need more green space. We need something that percolate and it's better for the environment because we really just killed off everything in this area. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anybody else from the public wish to speak on this agenda? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and turn over the board there. Do you have any questions? Okay. Yeah, if you can come back up to the microphone. I just want to confirm something. I finally drove by it. Your access to egress from your restaurant, is that through the road that accesses egress to Walmart? Please raise Walmart is across the street on the north side of Boise Beach Boulevard. It, we have shared access with beaches. What is the big shopping center that is south of you? The big parking lot. The, the big parking lot to the south of the BJ's parking lot. At BJ's, I'm yes. sorry. Okay. BJ. To me, unfortunately, they start coming a lot. Mm -hmm. Am I correct that you would access the restaurant, your restaurant, by turning in off White Beach Boulevard on the same road as you access BJ's? Correct. So you have no direct access on the federal lot on your White Beach Boulevard? That is correct. Okay. Uh, did you? Uh, concerning uh, Susan's concern about traffic, and you're being next to a high traffic restaurant, did you in your studies evaluate what the impact that would have on the accessibility to your restaurant? Um, I believe that's been thoroughly evaluated. We do have our traffic engineer present, um, so I'll ask that she come up and speak to that issue. Yeah, I, I, I mean, we've heard Susan speak about concern, and I'd like to know. What have you done with respect to that concern? Uh, I apologize. Before I speak, I do need to be sworn in. Anybody else that might want to speak? Oh, I wouldn't be sworn in. Okay. Uh, you swear or affirm the testimony we're about to give this proceeding will be the whole thing about this. I do. Thank you. For the record, my name is Stephanie Kim with Kim Report. Uh, I'm the team from the local Beach. Uh, the study that we looked at was. A standard Palm Beach County PBS traffic study. So, in terms of the impacts to the surrounding county roadways that they're um, concerned with, we look at what's the net new traffic. So, we compare what was there before to what is that going to be proposed, meaning the bank to the fast food. In terms of the driveways themselves, we do look at the traffic to the overall site that includes the DJs, the gas station, and the, the Chick fil A. Um, and at that point, we looked at um, any consideration for removing turn lanes, and at that point, we found that all turn lanes would go more into the current lane. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, question for, on the traffic. On the double lanes, how there's not going to be a divider or any type of buffer or landscape between the two lanes that are literally zero to like a zero lane line. There's no, there's no space between the two lanes. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a good question. Um, I don't know if it's we would meet the buffer and see bubble requirement. Um, we we typically would have a foot or two in between. However, um, it is a um, thick pavement striking that would be between the two lanes. The two back lanes. Um, to, to the where you're ordering, there is a striped um, three or four foot area um, where you would be placing an order where the crew members will be standing. But once you're at the pay window and you're in that area, it was reduced so we could meet the landscape bubble requirement. How, how many cars are you figuring would be in the stacking lanes at a time? Um, I'll let that be the average. So, what we took into consideration was we looked at the peak hour of the Liverpool's restaurant, um, and that is not meant to be like this gross strike state we're looking at. Um, and we looked at the Liverpool stacking, which is five spaces between the present window and the order boards in each lane, so 10. 10 vehicles and then an additional two spaces in each lane behind the that window before the other encounter parking space. Uh, what we looked at with the random arrivals during the peak hour was that um, the uh, purpose would be sufficient for, for those peak hours. And last question the stacking that would occur then to the south into the DJ's property and not onto Fort Beach Boulevard or onto Winchester? Can you all bring up the Exhibit on the slides. I just want to make sure the stacking because it, there's no question we have a lot of issues with our fast food uh, yeah. stacking, especially yeah. with Starbucks and others. So, on the same thing, we show uh, the stacking wraps around the restaurant to the north and then goes back to the south through the parking lot before we reach that um, east west drive aisle, which connects to Manchester. Five cars in each lane? Five cars in each lane between the present window and the order board, an additional two cars in each lane behind uh, the order board, so for you and the other spaces. So, where are they prior to that? Where are they stacking to, to get in that lane? Because they're not, I mean, you're going to have more than five people that are going to come. So, we have the first day you're open, we have a problem with the same issue that we're dealing with for all of our fast food restaurants, and that's Stacking on onto this, just backing up to this to the actual flow of traffic. In this situation, it'll be the parking lot. Um, but help me understand a little more about when they arrive to come into the property. Okay, so to clarify a little bit better, when the vehicles are entering the property, they're going to enter through that south entrance on the, on the south side of the property. You're going to wind your way through the, the parking. Um, and then you're going to enter at the north side of the site. That drive through can contain 14 vehicles. That's five in each lane and then two on each lane. It is staggered, but there, there is space for 14 vehicles. And do you have experience with this type of double lane in, in your other establishments and not having any, any uh, accidents? In Yes, we've opened about two dozen of these. Again, we started rolling them out during COVID. So, because of the development life cycle, they're just now starting to open. Um, but they've been open for three or four months. And we found that it's significantly improved the circulation through our site. To your point about on opening day and stacking out of the site, that's something we actually plan for. So, we'll hire. Um, Security or off duty police officers, wherever they allow them to jurisdiction. Um, and people will get turned away. If they're starting to stack out on the Winchester, they'll be directed to either park and come inside or to come back. So that's again an area where we're a little bit different. So we're not going to let them just stack out and, and cluster your road because that is a verse on our business. It means that your staff is going to start getting calls and we're going to start getting calls and we're going to have to figure something out. So 
we are proactive with this and actually do a phase opening plan. I mean, we know there's a honeymoon period in COVID. So where are we going to stack people? 14 people is sufficient for after that honeymoon period. So based on the volume of this restaurant and expected sales during lunch, we're confident 14 people will is all that we need to stack in the drive-through. If there were an extra few cars, to her point, they're going to stack on site. They're not going to stack out in the road. The neighboring property is a legacy drive-through. That's where a lot of those issues come from. Is it single lane? It was built 20, 20 years ago and never contemplated what we have. Here we're actually designing for that volume. Thank you. Uh, just one quick question for, for Mike and um, Okay. Mike Gandhi, how do we remedy? Let's just say they open it and what we think will happen happens, and that's the traffic is stacking. How do we resolve that? Would how do, can we make some conditional use that would require them to come back or address it? Or how would we how do we handle that? Would it just be a code issue? My for closing administrator again. Um, yes, unfortunately, yes. Uh, there is staff of the city do take a progressive approach to attempt to resolve issue of operational issues like this first. Um, as, as Adam um, can confirm, it's his staff, new standard staff, is very user friendly to attempt to resolve for what's on the set to a, a board there in the ministry. So we do. Uh, we are very hands on. Uh, I cannot say that in this case, given site size, um, congestion, if you will, or design, but there's a lot of options. And I think you've heard it. I know mean, that this is this operator and owner is very attractive in terms of having a um, pleasant experience on the property. And it, of course, appears to have a very efficient system. And then, trust me, let, let me commend uh, senior planner Katie Hatcher, who as the staff, as the agents, have, have not indicated to you how much time was spent on that system alone out of anything else there. I assure you, students, a lot of time has been spent on, on making this fit, um, even to the degree of adjustments for footage on um, making other work. Yes, they would like you to be busy for a few times. We hope they are. They hope they are. Um, fortunately, there's a private parking lot. We just got that to point as well. Um, so they will not move down on two part of the bar with talking time to curve down the road and something else is really a hazard. Um, so there's something we'll occur. And perhaps those two periods are probably going to be off site off the relative to the DJ restaurant and to this side party. So if, if, if there is going to be a busy business, this is a good location. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mike, uh, quick question for you. Uh, there was a Wells Fargo there, which is going to be torn down. It had a drive through. What is the difference between drive through and a drive through? And why wasn't it? Did it, did it have a conditional usage for that drive through? And doesn't the conditional usage transfer to this new uh, uh, park? <clears throat> if they kept the same building, they had conditional approval, then it would have been the approval. But since this is a new design, major site and modification, if you will, to the site, um, then no, uh, it's very reviewed with the user characteristics of the design. Okay. As far as traffic goes, um, I'm, I'm not familiar with, with, with this intersection with Point Beach Boulevard, but I am with this Winchester Park and Old Point Beach where Texas Road now sits. And when you come into the, the plaza there, that whole entry lane is, is stacked. In other words, there's no stop sign. When you get to the circular drive, it goes around the plaza. You know, you know what I'm saying? There's no, there's no stacking there. So the stacking lane is that whole uh, uh, Winchester Park roadway. If you come in this way you've got it here, if you can't turn into the, to the thing, people are going to stack back and back into Winchester Park. They're not going to stack in the, in the, uh, the circular drive that services the entire EJ's area. They're going to stack back into Winchester Park. 
because that's where they're coming from. How you keep them from doing that? Once they're stacked there, then it's a, just a short jump to stack back into uh, one deep profile. Yeah, so we, we do recognize that. And so that's that was my point that we'll have crew members or third party security or off duty police officers out there making sure that does not happen if that becomes the case. Primarily, that's going to be during the opening the first few weeks that we're in business. Um, but if we see that it's an issue, eventually people will learn that they're not going to be stack is what we found with other locations. Uh, where that's been an issue. And those were older locations. Let me clarify that it's not a new one. The new restaurant the same design. Those are restaurants that have a single lane so we have had to implement those systems. Well, the newer restaurants don't necessarily be better. I don't think there's an old Chick fil A anywhere. Is there? I mean, Chick fil A. Well, the one adjacent to the site is a 20 year old car design with a single lane drive that's stacked about four or five cars, which is vastly insufficient for their operations now. And the Wells Fargo is being torn down. Just as a side note, nothing makes you realize that you're getting old until you see something being torn down that you remember being built. That's, that's it. Jay, yeah, real quick. Yeah, please. Uh, how many acres do you presume you're going uh, to service per hour if you're maximum 30? So it depends on the volume of the restaurant. And this restaurant is, to do some quick math in my head, probably working at 100 customers at lunch. 100 customers are an hour, correct? Yes. All right. What is the length of time it takes from the time they put in their order? Is it in service on the way out? What's that gap of time? It's two and a half minutes, but that's not entirely off the time period. So that would be so you, you can service 60 people an hour? Yeah, I, I would have to sit down and look at the map to make it. And you probably to get, get a sense again, the question of the question of staffing in the last two good ways. As to how rapidly you're going to if you're getting that many customers an hour, if you only process 60 an hour, somehow it, I, I got a little trouble as an engineer working those numbers. So I'm looking at you to help. 75% so of the business is going to be right there. So if you look at 100 customers in one hour, so 75 cars right there, there's a customer leaving the driver every 30 seconds. So that's two a minute, so it's 120 cars to the and now. Okay. So the 30 second interval. Yes. Yes. Okay. Fine. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Um, all right. My turn. <laughs> the, uh, Mike, I want to ask you about <laughs> their neighbors. They, they routinely stack into what is that, Winchester, or not Winchester, but the area between the gas station and the, the Wells Fargo. But what does the city do to alleviate that? Except, you know, ask them, don't do that. Uh, Mike Rock plans on administrator. The city's not in the I'm not sure about that. The city if they have authorization and agreement with the property owner who is to do private property maintenance and controlling. Um, the city would not um, intervene in that circumstance. There are cross parking agreements, cross access agreements, paid parking if I'm wrong. And this is kind of, or, there is a um, cohabitation on that property, and to my knowledge, we've not received complaints uh, over there at this point in time. Um, oh, allow me. Who oh. <laughs> was the first? No. And I will, I will say this that speaking of that intervention, um, obviously, there's a, there's a reason to go through this review process. Right. Not only assist the business. In their design to meet our standards, but to be safe and user friendly as possible. We can put a better code of recognition. The state agency, um, Chick fil A, realizes that it's an inefficient process, as they described. And why I know this? Because they recently attempted their own retrofit 
um, to create the rule of timeliness. This was picked up by staff, and it, it didn't provide safe, safety bypass lanes and access to the property in the event of an emergency. So, unfortunately, staff had to go out and say, This is how we do this. If you want to come in and review the site for some type of improved um, system, do so, but it came to a very official site design that was that went through this same process years ago. So they know, um, obviously, it's, it's a better for them. Okay, yeah, I, I think either they're going to poach a lot of customers and it won't be so bad, or it's going to get really complicated right there at that old intersection where you turn either into DJs or go past it and go towards the gas station. It's, it's going to be entertaining. I think in theory, you know, once I was talking about the city's former um, public works director and, and director of engineers that we use, and <clears throat> sure, to a certain point, the consumer motorist may adjust their habits in, in the event that what they're experiencing is not pleasant and efficient for them. So there is an adjustment, that's for adjustment in the system. And of course, that adjustment occurred on private property, not interfering with our sure road. I get you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, real quick on the, the property itself, what is the change to pervious versus impervious after you guys are done compared to the Wells Fargo report? I don't have the exact number of but we are decreasing the amount of landscape in it proposed. I just couldn't see it because it was blurry on the on the slide there. Um, it is part of the existing master stormwater system, so we are um, whatever extra pollution is being removed, we are replacing it. Um, it is already it's permitted. So you will have to modify the existing stormwater. There will be a modification to the existing stormwater. And just for the record, you're required to hold a 25 year. It's 25 years, three days. 25 years, three days to one month. So you do right. have some kind of parameters you have to. That's right. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. All right, that's, that's all I've got. All right, any follow ups? All right, uh, go ahead and entertain a motion at this time to approve 7C. Anybody? No. All right, hold on. Huh? No. I don't know who was over there. Who made it for the record? Me. It was it was. And Tom gave the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. All right. Thank you very much. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll go ahead and move on real quick here to others. Not being any comments by members. Anybody have anything to wish to declare? We're losing, we're losing it here. Anything you guys want to make any comments? Yes, I want to remind everybody to be on the vote. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. And then uh, if that's all, I will happily entertain a motion to adjourn. Tom says so moved. Darren's just said. No public comment. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 You had the uh, public comment during the agenda. No, that's not, that was on the one issue. It's supposed to be a general public comment. No, sir. Not at the time of the development board meeting. Oh, okay. I'm all right. Right. By the way, why don't you leave? I'm going to send you this. Thanks, Terry. The least uh, healthy thing of all fast food. A six finger meal is almost 2,000 calories. Fat, cholesterol, and salt. You go to the judge. Google
I do appreciate it coming to you. Yeah, I heard it. 